beautiful Aries friends, and welcome to your horoscope for February of 2021, where this month, Aries, as we come into the month, your ruling planet Mars is still in the energy of Taurus, so that's letting us know that action is still happening, of course, but it's still slow, steady, enduring. So it's nothing that's really quick-paced or anything like that, but it is definitely a month where the movement is still possible, and you know that you're building something really solid to stand on. Not to mention, we're going to see our first Saturn-Uranus square happen this month. And this is an energy that I'm going to tell you right out of the gate. Don't push against it, adapt, be open-minded, be flexible, because it's only going to help you. Now, the rest of this month, Aries, is lit up for social success. New significant friends, I think, are coming into your life. Connections, whether they be online, in person, whatever it is, this is a highly, highly social 11th house month for you. So you want to jump in here and really take advantage of these energies, okay? Now, before we get into the forecast, the eat and greets are continuing to go on. We're welcoming beautiful friends this month, and this month we're going to talk a lot about child astrology as well. So I look forward to having you for all of it. Now, you can check out all of our guests and the times that they are coming over on my website at stormygrace.com right there on the home page I've got a very very cool calendar of events and it's not just the eat and greets but all the astro events that are coming this year I'll keep that calendar updated so you can just look right there at one central place to find out all of the cool details of what's going on around here as well I hope you're taking advantage of the winter souls disappointments they are down in the description box down below or at stormygrace.com and when they are gone they are gone all right, Aries, let's get in here and talk about what's going on this month. So right as we come into the month, Mercury is also still in retrograde until the 20th. So keep this in mind because even though Mercury is um, retrograde, it's more about continuing to go back over things that have been happening in the Aquarian areas of your chart, in these social areas of your chart. But also in the general reading, Mercury is one of the ruling planets of conversation, of decision making. It's a third house kind of energy for you in the general reading. So any big decisions that you're making, you really do. If they're new, you want to put them on pause. Now, if it's something that you're coming back to, you've already had the experience with it, it's totally okay to be getting those decisions solid and finalized out, okay? Now, on the first, we're going to see Venus, our planet of harmony, beauty, magnetism, love, romance, money. She's moving into the energy of Aquarius. This will light up your 11th house space. Friends, social groupings, causes, your long-range goals and plans for yourself. But the 11th house is also a house of accolades. You want to be seen and known and acknowledged here, and you want a little bit of praise in this particular arena. And Venus is drawing that in, drawing it to you. Now, not to mention, as Venus moves in here, she's joining the Sun, Mercury, Jupiter, Saturn. And even though Mercury is retrograde here, he is still a major player in the game. And this gives us a stellium of energy packed into your 11th house. Highly social. It's going to be two weeks worth of this intense social energy happening here. Now, I'm also going to tell you, I want you to pay attention if you have the kind of chart that is heavy with fixed sign energy and look at your chart look at that quality balance and you'll know if it's heavy fixed signs if you're heavy fixed i want you to pay attention to this energy because this is going to give those fixed placement signs an extra oomph of energy this month as well so aries eat it up the 11th house is absolutely activated for you now we're going to increase that as well on the 11th where we have a new moon happening in aquarius this is going to be at 23 degrees so you can map that out in your chart so the new moon is the darkest moon of the month right? We plant our seeds of intention, but we do it in the dark. We have to trust our intuition. You have to trust your instincts on what you're asking for a fresh start, fresh perspective on. In the 11th house, this could be fresh beginnings with new significant friends, social grouping, something that you are doing in social media, or you're getting the accolades on it. But at a social level, at a friendship level, this is a busy, promising moon for you to let some things begin over this next four weeks. Now, we're also going to have, as this moon's happening, Venus and Jupiter are in conjunction with each other. So this is a really nice harmony. These are the benefics. So there is very much so favor around this 11th house this month. Now, on the 12th, we're going to welcome in the Chinese 
Chinese New Year, the year of the ox. And I love this. Even though I don't practice Chinese astrology, I do follow the character of the year, who is symbolizing the year. And the ox, this is steady. This is determined. This is hard work and commitment for sure. But it's about building something, right? Not rebuilding. I know we've spoken a lot about 2021 being a year of rebuilding, and I don't think so. We don't want to rebuild what we had. We want to build something new in our personal lives, in our communities, something that we can really stand on. So the year of the ox, welcoming that in, I feel like that's just a delicious addition to what February is bringing in for us energetically. Now on the 14th, it's Valentine's Day, which even if you don't like Valentine's Day, I love it. So happy Valentine's Day. I'm sending you lots of love on this day. Not to mention we've got Mercury who is still retrograde in a conjunction with Jupiter. Now this is beautiful, sweet communication in that 11th house for you and likely some communication you're going back over because Mercury is still retrograde. But this again is a beautiful, social, connected kind of energy to have conversations, heal things from the past if there's past conversations that need to be made. Now Mercury is also so completely business savvy. So if you did have past negotiations that you need to bring an expansive deal on, maybe you're going to go back to teaching or sharing something on YouTube or at a social level. This is a beautiful energy to do that with. On the 17th, we're going to walk into this first Saturn-Uranus square for the year. Now, Saturn is here in the 11th house for you, so the friends, the groupings, everything we've been talking about, and it's squaring off with Uranus, who's over here in Taurus in the second house. Now, as these two are coming together, and this is happening at 7 degrees, so you can map that on your chart. As these two are coming together, what's happening under the square is the square is saying we need you to take action. Now, you get to choose what that action is. Right? Of course, I would suggest the most highly evolved level of action you have, but whatever it is, I'm going to tell you, don't resist change. Do not resist from the social level to your financial level, social level, value level. Don't resist the change. Get in it. Go with it. It's not the time to have these big explosive reactions because what you reap and sow here, you're going to live with for the next little bit of time. So instead in here, get methodical get practical, get um, get into a level of responsibility and commitment that you can stand behind the actions you're taking with this energy because the square is saying something is not right. We need to take an action here. But I also think that a part of this action will be that you need to break out of some kind of behavior, some kind of commitment, some kind of action that is not working and servicing you anymore. Things that are outdated, habits, beliefs, people, relationships, as these come together under this square, you're gonna see that it's time to maybe take an action to break out of that box, okay? On the 18th, we see the sun move into the energy of Pisces, so lighting up the 12th house space. And this is the sun bringing light, heat, life, and vitality to your rejuvenation space. The 12th house is we're hidden, we're quiet, it's a bit more solitary, it's creative in this area. This is also the sun's movement right before birthday time for you. If you need to rest, relax, rejuvenate, recuperate, rehab, whatever it is for you in this 12th house, give yourself a space to really tend to your spirit. Tend to letting the sun bring the vitality of assimilating everything you've learned over this last year. Bring it together in that sacred womb. Let it become whole in a piece of you. Absorb that because those lessons, those things that you encountered this year, you'll take forward into next year, but you can do it with a lot of wisdom, but you maybe need to go to ground to be able to do that. Now, other things that happen in the 12th house are things that we don't see necessarily publicly. So this can be things happening behind the scenes like romance, projects, all of these kinds of things things could be happening behind the scenes and in about the next four weeks we'll start to see those things come to light and come out to the surface. On the 20th Mercury is direct in the energy of Aquarius coming direct at 11 degrees. So now those social decisions that are new, anything you learned that came up that would be new, not something from the past, you can get ready to start launching those out and taking those forward now with Mercury's direct energy. On the 25th, Venus is now joining the sun in the energy of Pisces. So 
bringing a sweetness to caring for yourself. I really keep seeing this energy, Aries, um, as Venus comes into Pisces. If you can make sure you're massaging your feet, if you can make sure you're taking care of your head, like from head to toe, but just head to toe, make sure you're really getting in here, rubbing, loving on, taking care of your body, taking care of that spiritual body, the emotional body, and tending to it. But Venus is a planet of money and romance as well. So a past project, a past romance, or something in your romantic zone, something that you very deeply loved could be back on your table at this time. And you're learning what to do with that. Maybe healing, maybe forgiving, maybe transitioning it to something else. Okay. On the 27th, we have a full moon happening in the energy of Virgo. This will be at eight degrees in your sixth house, the house of health, daily routines, um, your schedule, being of service to other people. If you work independently or freelance or you employ people, you work for yourself, but you employ people, this is projects, employees, things like that. Now, the full moon is saying something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. So there is a shift on the table here. So I will tell you, with the full moon here, if you're feeling like, my health routine or my healthcare situation, including mental health, is not where I'd like it to be. Allow this full moon to show you how to make those adjustments. Virgo will pick up the patterns. You don't have to worry about it. It's our sacred pattern, our sacred healer, our sacred checker in of all things medical. Virgo will help you to bring this area to some beautiful transition. And truly, if in your daily routine you don't feel set or steady or you're like, I need something to change, this is a beautiful energy to manifest that and ask this moon to help you shed a lot of light on what needs to be adjusted. Now, as we close out this month, I absolutely love it. We're ending on the 28th under a grand earth trine between the moon happening in Virgo, the moon happening in Virgo, the moon being in Virgo, um, Pluto, who's over in Capricorn, and Mars in the energy of Taurus. Now, this beautiful Earth trine, a trine is a pocket of energy and opportunity given to us. It says, here's some ease, but you have to go to the opportunity. You have to take advantage of it. So under an Earth trine, what can you do to bring in changes of your life that are grounded, solid, practical and likely very much so in your material world. Earth signs are working in the material world. So where can you take advantage of an ease of practicality to bring some stability into your life as we're closing out February? That Uranus Saturn um, square will bring some shakeups. So maybe this is a great time to use some regrounding practices for yourself, okay? All right, my beautiful Aries, I think it's going to be a great month, and I think it's going to be not a great month that feels like the best thing ever for everybody, but it is a great month to take advantage of listening to this horoscope, breathing in what you can, and taking the most positive actions that are available to you, whether that be physically, mentally, spiritually, or emotionally. So I hope this forecast has given you a little hope and a little help this month. I look forward to seeing you in the forecast next month and guiding you through every week as well. Well. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe. Make sure you hit the notification bell so that as we're doing eat and greets or other broadcasts, live videos, things like that, you're getting the information and you're getting the notification right away, okay? All right, my beautiful friends, I'll see you next month. Bye, Aries.